seizures. This might be a two part series because I think there's more here than I can talk about in a single 50 minute stretch. So probably gonna be two parts. Okay, so um, what prompted this? Well, I just had a customer who called and they've got a dog that's almost a year old, a male dog that's having seizures and they're very upset and they've been to their vet. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later on as far as what the vet said. <clears throat> But it's a very distressing time when this happens. And so I think to be aware of what could happen and what you should do in preparation for the point that maybe someday you see a seizure that would be beneficial. Um, I've seen it one time, I had a lab a long time ago. The lab had a seizure when it was about oh, four months old and then it had seizures when it was about a year and a half, two years old and, and we had to treat the dog with medication. So. It's stressful and I think that uh, I didn't know much about it then, I know a lot more about it now, so I thought I'd just try and kind of uh, give you a little bit of my wisdom on this for what it's worth. Okay, so I think the first thing to realize is, is that when a dog has a seizure, this is typically not a life-threatening situation. This is not a situation where you've got to rush that vet to an emergency place to get dog treated. Most seizures last in dogs for a matter of maybe, um, you know, less than a minute. Um, and so, Let's not do some things that could get somebody hurt, and we'll talk more about that when we start talking about treatments. But the point here is, is I think there's two things that you have to realize right off the bat. If a seizure is, is going on, how you're gonna to react to this? And the answer to that is you're not gonna do very much other than keeping the dog in a safe place and in a safe environment the best you can. And the second thing is, is this could be an emergency if the dog is in a seizure because it's eaten something. So if it's got into a typical thing is like snail bait, those are the kind of things that will cause seizures in dogs and they can be life-threatening very, very quickly. So I think the very first thing to do is look around the area and try and figure out what may be the cause of the seizure. You know, if it's a typical epileptic seizure, that's one thing. But if it's caused by ingestion of a poison, that's something completely different. That one is an emergency. And I do have videos on how to treat dogs that have been poisoned with things like activated charcoal. And I think the sooner that if you, for instance, if you saw a whole pile of chocolate somewhere, uh, that would be one thing, or some, maybe some brat poison or something like that, or some snail bait, those are things that you'd wanna to react to those things really quickly by getting some activated charcoal down in their stomach or making the dog possibly throw up. I think that's not really the recommended treatment, but certainly the activated charcoal. So the point here is that is a situation that you need to react to immediately but almost all of the other situations, they're not things that you're gonna to react to, and you just need to let it take its course and not get you or your dog hurt in the process. Okay, so this is an overview. So the signs, uh, causes, and treatments, we're gonna go about those in some, in some significant detail. Let's talk about signs now. Um, so if this is the first time your dog's had a seizure, you won't realize what the signs were beforehand, and the dog may be acting a bit strangely, but you certainly would not know that that's indicative of an impending seizure. Um, and so I'm not talking about a seizure that's been caused through poisoning. I'm talking about seizures that are caused for other reasons. They may be an internal problem with the dog. It could be a brain function problem with the dog. It could be a genetic problem with the dog. But th I think the important thing here is, is that when you do experience a seizure, that you start taking notes because this is gonna be useful to deciding whether this is something that's gonna keep on occurring and how you treat it, versus something that's very seldom happens. Um, so what are precursors to a seizure? A dog that is wobbly, a dog that is uh, disorientated, a dog that is acting in a peculiar way, a dog, a dog that is having, um, you know, is very standoffish towards you, or a dog that's very clingy to you. I mean, those obviously can be other things as well, but the point here is pay attention to what happened before the seizure occurred, because that could be a really useful indicator on the next time that a seizure might occur. And that would get you the possibility of getting into a safe environment. When I mean a safe environment, you're out walking the dog on the street and it has a seizure. It's a horrible place to have a seizure. I mean, there's no good place for a seizure, but there are some places that are definitely much worse. You know, a dog that is out and about at the beach, not a good place for a seizure. A dog that's quietly in a bedroom and you could get that dog in there, a much better place for a seizure. So the point here is start taking notes on when the seizure started, what the preamble to the seizure was, how long the seizure lasted for, and how the dog acted during the seizure. Okay, 
So there are, um, where are we going to go from here? We're going to get into causes, and I think that's going to be a part two on this. Um, but but I, do want to, I do want to really impress upon you that, that your safety is very important here. A dog that's having a seizure, especially a seizure, what we call a grand mal seizure or an epileptic fit, those dogs are going to be extremely disorientated. And they may be clamping their mouths, they may be jerking their legs around, they may be stiff-legged, they may be staring off like this, they may be drooling at the mouth. But all of these things are not a situation where your dog is actually in any, probably in any pain. So for you to get too close to this dog, with a dog that you've never experienced a seizure with before, and get your face up there in the dog's face to try and reassure it, because remember, this is your pooch and you're really worried about it, but don't get your face or your hands anywhere near the bitey end, right? Be careful because you absolutely could get bitten for a dog that's the most docile, beautiful animal in the whole world could act very differently during a seizure. So there is no point in you getting hurt. And if you get hurt, you can't look after your dog. There is not a lot that you can do while the seizure is going on other than getting other animals out of the way. If there's other dogs around there, get those other dogs out. The dog that I was telling you about, my lab that had seizures, and I didn't know any better, but she would, it was quite obvious that she knew when I was around and she felt better when she was in a stiff leg position when I was stroking her. And if there's another dog around, she would go like this. She could tell there's other animals around. She didn't want them around. So just be very careful because you don't want to get bit, but you want to get the dog away from other things that can cause it problems. If there's a lot of furniture around, maybe you can move the furniture out of the way. If there's other dogs around and other animals and cats, get them out of the room. Don't move the dog. The temptation is to pick the dog up and put it somewhere. Don't do it. The temptation is to put the dog in your car and take it to the vet. Don't do it. All of these things, just wait and let the seizure run its course. Most seizures are short-lived. They're going to last for maybe you know, less than a minute. The seizures that are a lot more concerned, and we'll talk about those more later on, are seizures that reoccur, cluster seizures, seizures where the dog doesn't fully recover from the previous seizure and has another seizure, they have a lot more concern. But still, the general rule is, is don't move the dog. Don't get too close to this dog. You can go rub its back end and see how that works, but just remember that this dog may react in a violent and different way, and he really could get hurt, especially with big dogs. All right. Um, so I think that is the first part. So I think we've got an overview done, and I think we've got some general signs done. And now we need to talk about causes and treatment, and that's going to be the next video. So here we go on the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.